Collective. Welcome everybody to the ninth episode of Almost a Party. We're almost in double digits, everybody. Yay, we did it. Yay. Yay. There we there we go. Got some reaction out love of that, everybody. Love that enthusiasm. <laughs> Got gotta love that. Uh, we have Ore is back with us this week. Alondiel should also be back Yay. with us. They haven't said one way or another whether they'll be here. So we'll wait and see if they show up. Up, But uh, let's go ahead and get into this. So last time, our players found the Shattered Dust headquarters south of the city of Kuche. A, a large walled um, camp. <laughs> where there were several gnolls standing guard and it was set up to be easily defendable. Our players climbed over the smooth wall using the spider climb and created a distraction by setting the hay on fire, leading to an all-out brawl between the forces left behind in the camp and our players. Our players struggled for a bit but eventually came out on top and then decided to look through the camp a bit more. Or eventually they found a map that looked like it had some battle plans drawn up on it, indicating an army was marching to Bracknell from Kuche, as well as from somewhere within the swamp. They estimated where the fortress they had already taken over was from was where the second army would be marching from. Our players have sent message off to the counselors to let them know. And upon leaving the base, we pick up with our players. So, you fought a long, hard battle and begun to travel back north to the city of Kuche. Bef before we left, did anyone ask how many gnolls or how many beings are in the army that's set out for Rachnel? Uh, no, that was not a question that ever came up. Can I retroactively ask that question? Uh, I think I think the plan was we hadn't left yet. Because I knew somebody would think of something that three <laughs> of us didn't think of. So I think the plan was we were getting ready to leave, but we hadn't left the camp yet. Yeah, because I think we were... Um, we paused on leaving to check if we want to rest or have any other yes. questions from you guys first right with the looting of the bodies and going through that basement would we have considered considerably have had a long rest since the battle no not at all you've not even had a short rest since the battle short short rest that's what i meant to ask short rest since going through all of that stuff yeah we haven't stopped for an hour we i would very much around. enjoy one of those we probably should do a short rest before we leave. Yeah, I don't think you can ask for one in real life. Sorry. <sighs> I know I would. So I, I think definitely we should take a short rest as a group for those of us that benefit from that. Okay. And did we, we didn't decipher any of the papers that we gained gathered in that basement, correct? Correct. We haven't really, yeah. We haven't looked at them really, I think. So, uh, Ore is going to ask the non combatants uh, how many individuals uh, make up the army that is descending on Bracknell? Uh, we don't know. We're not part of the army. We don't know where all they were based out of. There were 50 that left from here, though. Thank you. That is most helpful. We're sorry to have interrupted your meal. I assume they were eating, sitting in that light commissary as we they were. raided the place. Yeah. <laughs> sorry to interrupt your dinner by killing all the people outside. Uh, hey, it's dinner and a show. It's a horror movie. It's a murder mystery dinner. I didn't specify what kind of show. <laughs> it's a very easy mystery to solve, though. You yeah, guys, the mystery you guys is, did it. The mystery is what is going on, not who killed them. I love I love movies with a twist like that. 
yeah, if we could take a short re- oh, are we safe enough to take a short rest around the non-combatants? I mean, probably. I I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, we did kind of, like, block them from leaving, so Ito can just take his rest watching the door to make sure they don't come out. And if they give a shit, like, what are they going to do? Attack us? Well, we now get murdered? (laughs) Like, that's not a plan for them. No. Uh, But we now have a whole bunch of uh, uh, tabaxis with us as well, right? Yeah. Who we've given food and water stolen, or food and drink and whatnot from the larder. How are the non-combatant gnolls treating us freeing the tabaxi? Do you show them that you freed the tabaxi? Because they've been staying in the... Uh, we have told them nothing. Cafeteria. Basically. Yeah, yeah we, kept, we kept... We told them stay here. So I don't okay. think we probably would have showed them. Because we don't so want the, the army to know without them having to investigate. Right. So we they they haven't left that one building and nope. we've searched everything else. Yep. Yeah. I don't remember the answer I uh, to my question. Do are we are we safe enough to to take a short rest here? That's something you'll have to determine amongst yourselves. I can um, keep eyes on them. I don't really benefit a ton from a short rest except for gaining a few hit points back. So I'll just keep some eyes on them, and you guys can rest on the other side of the camp. I'm okay with that. Sounds like a plan. Do we have anything else we want to do before we rest and leave? Yeah, I don't get anything special. Uh, as part of my short rest, I'd kind of like to go through that paperwork that we gathered up from that basement office. Okay. Why don't you guys hang out in the office area in the that was in the bottom left of the map? That had the yeah. table and everything. You can rest in there and look at the papers and stuff. Okay. Yeah, Ito will as well. Okay. So all of the papers, it's written out in null. Ah, crap. So, unless you have a way to understand Null, the papers are useless to you. I still say Ito will probably suggest packing them up and bringing them back to the mayor. Yeah, we were already planning to steal them for, if not the mayor, then the leaders. We weren't just going to leave them. Like, that's that's off the table. We're taking them with us. Or burning them. <laughs> we're doing something so that the gnolls no longer have them. And we take them with us. And then, worst case, we can burn them later if we need to. We can put we can start a bonfire whenever we need. What was that circular water thing on the other side of the camp? Uh, wash basin? Or was it no, bad? the one with the, the circles. Oh, that is that the teleportation circle? Oh, yeah, yeah. on the left side, that's the teleportation gotcha, circle. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. The one with the circles. Uh, in that armory, you said it was weapons and shields. You didn't see anything about armor. There's no armor in there, correct? No armor in there. Got ya. Well, I mean, shields are armor, but... Yeah. And our right, plan was... Body armor. Can we reasonably get all of the weapons and shields if we have the tabaxi help carry stuff without, like, overloading anyone too much? Uh, I, mean, I was thinking about Because you're a centaur, you can get carry a bunch of things. Uh, yeah, you could easily do that. It might take some maneuvering and strapping things to your back, but... Oh, yeah, I can carry another 250 pounds. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. Ito also has another 100 pounds. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, cool. But we could we could equip the tabaxi with shields and even some simple weapons. So whether they're trained or not, if we get to set upon by anything, they're not out there with us completely without armor arms themselves. They have claws. They're never unarmed. 
Unless you chop off their arms. So just shields. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I think we can probably distribute a few of them, but I, I think these are mostly just people, not unless there's soldiers. Sure, but just to give them a little bit of yeah, an edge. That's fine. Yeah, we're in sure. terrible territory. So we will rest, and if nothing goes wrong, we're gonna give distribute out a couple of the weapons and stuff, and then head out for the outskirt of town, but not in town. Actually, we probably should try and get these guys back to town and get them on a boat back to. Uh, yeah, back. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Definitely, we need to get close to town. And then, like, talk to the mayor and then get out of here. <laughs> I'd almost want to escort the tabaxi straight to the boat, right to the docks, and be like, next boat to Bracknell. These guys are on it and pay for it and just, like, get them out of here. I think that's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. And then go talk for to now, the mayor. Do we get our short rest? Uh, yes, you may go ahead and take your short rest, those of you who would like it. Hey, and I heal back to full. Ito's out here healing seven hit points two. more than I have. I got seven. I healed 23. Yeah. I'm going to get my wild shapes back. For sending stones, uh, if you find a, a sending stone, does it save a message until somebody listens to it? Or no. Do you have to be it in just possession casts when sending. the message pops? It yeah, it casts cast sending instantly to the other stone as a target, basically. Right. Uh, we got one of the sending stones from the camp before we reached this base. Um, Ori is going to take the sending stones, take that specific sending stone, Ooh, and send plan. a message into it. See which one it attaches to. And see if it rings off to another one, yeah, that we already have. Cool. Because we've got five that we picked up from here that we don't know what they belong to. Right, but if the one from that group connects to the other one that we got from that camp, yeah, at least four. Then we just have a second set of sending stones amongst ourselves. Yes, which, which nice. would be fantastic. Okay, um, the sending stone does not work. Curses. Like it's been used, or yeah, oh it yeah, it was yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Like, it's been used today. We'll save that trick for tomorrow. A dragon answers. All right, cool. So we've rested. Uh, we'll head out, I guess. And um, I will scout, like, a little further ahead of the group moving along, just so that we don't come across anything suddenly that we're not noticing. OK. Um, do you have dark vision? Because it is definitely getting dark at this point. Not currently. Okay. It's very sad. Okay. okay. So never uh, mind. Because I don't want to get murdered and a man running around by themselves without dark vision and a torch will get murdered. We do have... Someone has um, lights, right? Yeah. So um, Alandiel can do, I think, light or dancing lights? Let's see. Yeah, here. dancing lights. Yeah, he's got dancing lights. I've also got cool. produced flame. Like we could make a torch if necessary. Um, yeah, we, and I did with, have dark vision. I just don't have a spell okay. slot for it anymore. Yeah, we'd be okay with dancing lights. As well. I mean, it, they're gonna see us. Is basically how it's gonna work. But we can go, and at least we won't be blind. Mm -hmm. So how so, far look. are you wanting to go? You're wanting to go all the way back to town with the five tabaxi in tow. Our goal is to get to the docks more so than town. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna need to cross through town. Is that like in town? Yeah, okay. that's on yeah. the far side. So at least getting right. back to town, regardless. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should take the tabaxi to the mayor. Let them tell their story as well. And then get them to the boat and get them I, out of there. I would rather we bring the mayor to them at the docks. <laughs> like, 
I, I'd rather get them towards a vote and then bring the mayor than, than take them into town with the mayor. That's a good point. I like that. All right. Away we go. So you're heading back to town to go to the docks. All right. You continue north, heading back through. Eventually, you reach the camp that you assaulted earlier in the day. The bodies of those you've slain still strewn about. Didn't we burn the bodies? I don't believe so. I don't think so. You okay. think we you beheaded a couple of them. Yeah, we beheaded one of the guys. I think we talked about doing it, and then I don't yeah, think we, we actually about it, did. We didn't. Yeah, we did okay. behead one guy. Got it. All right. You continue northward. It's been a few hours since the sun gets down, but you see the lights of the city up ahead. Continuing on, you eventually reach the city. As you do, you see that there are several gnolls going about their business, is moving through the town. And several of them with weapons by their side, insignias of the city on their armor. Do we get any impression of a hostility towards us specifically? Very much so. Because as they see you entering the town with five tabaxi, they turn, look at you, and go, that's far enough. You are not welcome here. Any of you. We're just looking to leave. Well, then turn around and leave. Yeah, we need to get to the boats. Well, you're not welcome here, so you're not welcome to use our docks. Leave. We have we have special permission from the mayor to be in town. Yeah. And I would grab the letter. The mayor has no authority in this town, hasn't for some time. How many gnolls, did you say? Uh, so you, this is just a pair of them that you are seeing right now. The question becomes, how much violence? Well, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to just show them the heads of the leaders we've killed. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe that would go very well. Well, no, but it may get us at least, I don't know, something. I feel, I feel like, like this, this might, might not end without violence. Out of character question. Am I allowed to, like, lose my, my mind, I guess, and uh, just, like, run up and start stabbing them? Yeah. yeah. That's a loud. certainly an option on the table every day in the real world as well. Is it a good oh. option is what you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Oh, it's usually also, not. I'm trying to think of a good lie. I've got a good deception. I, I'm actually trying to think of a very just realistic uh, argument for letting us through. At this yeah, point, I'm... they go, you need to turn and leave now. Can I please run forward to... and just... Sorry. You want to attack them, is what you're saying? Yes, I want to stab them. Okay, so we have entered combat. All right. I just want to run up, run up to the first one and stab them, yelling, you killed him, you killed him! Oh yeah, you're having a breakdown. We haven't talked about that yet. No, we have not. 
Okay. We we also still haven't had the chat about the torture that we were supposed to have, but you know. It's been a long day, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and uh roll some initiative. Perfect. We're playing Eight. D&D, y'all. Nat one for three. You also got a net one for three? Yeah. I got a net one for four. But... <laughs> Buddy. Yeah. We were not ready for her to lose her shit. All right. So Maseki nope, got a four. Ito got a three. Ten for Ore. Yeah. Correct. And eight for Sadzi. Eight for Sadzi. All right. Ito was ready for it. He just kind of forgot how long it takes to pull a spear off his back. Okay, and a 19 for Elandiel. Elandiel is always ready to throw down. <laughs> All right. Uh, but Elandiel's also not making the first move, so... Yeah, because he's, he's very much the retribution sort. Yep. So um, Elandiel will do nothing on uh, his turn. Um, and then it's Ore's turn. So I see, Sadza, you grabbed a blade, at, like you pulled out a sword and started to like get ready to go at him. A dagger. A dagger. Yeah, I figure we're probably close enough that me running towards them, I could easily get into melee range very quickly. Yeah. So Ori, as they as they say, you know, turn, you, know you have to turn around. And I'll Ori will reply, "We are not going to do that." And Sadzi like loses her shit and takes off at him. Uh, Ore's kind of kind of sag just a little bit like I was hoping for diplomacy in the back of his head and he is going to hold nothing he's going to walk how far away are they from us uh, at this point they're about 80 feet away they're about 80 feet away yep Ore is going to step forward 30 feet. And he's going to cast... Oh, no, he's not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to cast Fairy Fire on the two of them. Okay. Uh, what's the save? Uh, deck save 15. Deck save 15. Okay. I think they both have it. Uh, one gets a 12, one gets a 15. So one saves, one fails. Okay, so the guy who failed, uh, I shoot out what looks like a glitter bomb, and it poofs, and it just really clings to the one guy. The other guy just kind of drops off him. So there are advantage on attack to the guy. So if you want to go at him, you have advantage. Okay. And then it and... is Sadzi's turn after you are done, or a Okay, so you said they're about 80 feet away. Yes. So my speed's 35. So Wait, they were just yelling at us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They they so can see you 45. pretty clearly as you come into town and you've got five to back. No, that's, that's fair. Oh. Just... All right. Uh, I'm 45 feet away, so I'd like to throw my dagger at them. Okay. Whichever uh, ones in front are being loudest. Uh, it is just the two. What's the th throwing range on a dagger? 2060? Yes, 2060. Okay. 60's the max, yeah. Yeah, so 60's the max. Um, so you're at disadvantage unless you're within 20 feet, which you're not able to get there with a speed of 35. So go but ahead and. You can throw it at the. But you can throw it at the, the glittering one to just do a straight roll. Sure, I'll throw it at the glittery one. All right. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Okay, you crit. Oh. I was? Whatever. So that's going to be seven points of damage. Okay, seven points of damage. 
All right. What kind of armor are they wearing? Uh, they are wearing hide armor. The same stuff we've seen before. Yep. Theirs is a little bit nicer, more well taken care of, and like I said, has the emblem of the city emblazoned upon it. All right. Uh, anything else that you'd like to do, Sadzi? Um, I don't think I have anything I can do. Okay. Beyond that, so. All right. It is the Knoll's turn. Um, the knoll that is all lit up and glittery is going to pull out a horn and blow on it. On it, you hear this loud, loud noise as the horn emits. The other knoll is going to pull out his longbow and fire at the charging one throwing the dagger. Uh, that's only an eight to hit, so I believe that will miss. Yeah, it'll and miss. It is now Mizeki's turn. Uh, step one, he's going to tell uh, Elandiel to get the prisoner, former prisoners back, keep them safe. And then he's going to fire his short bow. He's going to make sure he's within 80 feet of the guy and fire his short bow yeah. at the dude that's lit up. Okay, yep, you're within 80 feet, so you can go ahead and make your attack roll. I forgot to do advantage. That's you much get better. advantage because he glows. I know, yeah. 22, much better. 22 hits. Oh, and I you get, get sneak to, attack um, because of I that, guess, right? Yeah, because he's advantage. Yeah, I get sneak attack. Yep. Uh, 16. Okay, he goes down. Yay. Ito. This is horrible. It is your turn. So how far are they again? Uh, 80 feet. Mizeki will also have yelled okay. for Sadzi to stop and, and keep oh, moving towards yeah. her. Because I, I was considering just a straight dash at them, but even that won't get me close enough unless I action surge dash, and even then I'll just stop right in front of them. You have a um, longbow. I know. You have a long, but you have a magic longbow. Use it. I know. I know, but Ito is not generally a character that loves to use ranged weapons. But yes, I'll use a longbow. Okay. Ito's growing as a person right before our eyes. 16 plus 4 for 20 to hit. 20 will hit. Should be five damage, okay. and he will move thirty feet forward as he's doing that. All right, sounds good. Um, it is Alandiel's turn, who is going to start escorting the Tabaxi back away from everything, and then Ore, it is your turn. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I went in. I only went in thirty feet. Did they? You said they came closer. Now they started making their way closer. No, they have not. Okay. One They've blew a horn, and the other pulled out a longbow. Gotcha. I am going to close another thirty feet, so I should be sixty. They're twenty feet away from me. Yes. I'm gonna produce flame in my hand, and I'm going to attack the glowing one. The glowing one is dead. Sorry, the not glowing one. He has the horn, the one who's still alive, right? Nope, the glowing one had the horn. The glowing one had it, okay. Free horn. D&D &D Beyond is really slow right now. That is 21 to hit. 21 will hit. Just waiting on the damage. Full eight damage of fire. Okay. And then I'm going to wild shape into my starry form, the archer, and shoot him with the archer form. Okay. Your Honor, we have a signed paper from the mayor. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, they didn't care, so all right. That's 21 to hit with that. All right. 
21 hits. And that is 12 damage. All right. How do you want to do this? Uh, so Sadzi runs up and, and takes out the first guy. And I walk up, light my hand on fire, throw fire on him, turn into a star, shoot stars at him uh, like I do. And he kind of like when it normally impacts and it starts burning through, he starts to glow for a bit of a moment and they burst into the same kind of puff of stars I threw uh, in the glitter bomb. Okay. All right. Sadzi, it is your turn. Both of the gnolls are currently dead. The two that you have seen. Uh, can I run to the first one and retrieve my dagger and maybe stab the corpse a couple times? Uh, sure. I mean, it's a little far. Um, are we considered like out of battle yet or no? Okay, then I will move closer. Okay. okay. Yelling obscenities. All right. You could reach him and pick up your dagger this turn. You just yeah. couldn't run to No, him I couldn't. I'd still be dead. 10 feet away by my you map. You can go 70 by using your action to move. Yes. And that would be 70 feet total. They were only 80 away, and you've gone 35. Right. So the most I could go is 70 at... No, you the... can spend your action to move again. Y yes. You can both move and spend your action to go 70 feet in one turn. Oh. You won't be able to attack because you've spent your action, but you can get up to them and pick up your dagger. Oh, okay. Then yes. that I would like to do that. Forgot that actions and moving were two different things. You will, however, be standing at the gate by yourself. <laughs> but it doesn't seem like making good choices is what she's doing right now. So, no, no, she's pretty much just losing, losing her shit. All right. Okay. So, Mizeki, it is your turn. Ah. Uh, I can make it the rest of the way to them. Uh, I'm going to run up and let's see. Do I see or hear any other guards coming immediately? You do not see or hear any of them coming immediately. Okay. I am going to step one, grab the dead guy and like take his horn. Okay. And then, like, step two, grab Sadzi and try and be like, hey, we need to go. At the very least, you need to back up. This isn't safe. I'll move when I'm sure he's dead. He He's dead. There's an arrow in his throat. I shot it. We need to go. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. If if Sadzi's not going to immediately move, he, I'm going to move over to like, are, they were next to a wall, or just like out in the open. They were just down the street. Okay, so if there if there's a building or anything I can hide behind, I would I want to get into a spot and use my bonus to hide. Okay. Go ahead and there, make a stealth check. While he's doing that, is there anybody else out on the street? Uh, there are a few sense. civilians out on the street. 25. Knolls or other races? Uh, Knolls. That's all that you're seeing at this time. Good, good. That's that's good. How are they reacting to the fact that there was a horn blown and then two of the guards died? Oh, they're running. Yeah, they're fleeing. That's good. That's positive. It makes it easier to distinguish. So, uh, 25 to hide. Okay. Ito, it is your turn. Cool. So I'm going to dash 60 feet forward, I guess. There's not a ton else I can do at the moment. Okay. All right. Alandiel's going to continue moving the tabaxi out of the city and escorting them away. Or a. 
Yes. It's your turn. Uh, so, Sazi didn't move. She's still, like, hacking away at the body. She oh. just got up to the body and picked up her dagger. Dagger. She's not gotcha. hacking away at it yet, but... Gotcha. Um, sure, I am going to kind of, uh, so I apologize. Alondiel is escorting all the other tabaxi back out of the city or through the city? Out of the city. Getting out away city. from where you guys are fighting. I shout back, Alondiel, docks are this way, and I'm going to rush and try to pick up Sodzi and start rushing through the city. Okay. Um, Sadzi, are you resisting as Ore tries to grab you? Yes, I'm trying to cut off the dude's head. Okay. Uh, then you're going to need to make an athletics check, um, Ore, to grab her. Doing it. And go ahead and make an op opposed either athletics or acrobatics check, Sadzi. Your That's choice. a 17 for me. Ooh, 14. Okay. So Ore grabs you. But that is his action. And it is now your turn. So you can escape. Am I able to am I able to move with her while picking her up? Um you were still twenty feet back, so grabbing her oh, I... you would have like five feet that you could move her. Five left. feet works. I'll still be trying to get her further away from those bodies. Yeah. All right, Sadzi, so you have been grabbed. You can attempt to escape just by making an acrobatics or athletics check versus Ore's athletics to hold on to you. It does use your action. Yeah, I'd be struggling to, to try to get away from him. So You can also attack him. That is also an option. I don't encourage attacking your party, but... Not yet. But struggling, yes. So I'll make an acrobatics check. All right, and or I go ahead and make an athletics check to hold on. Damn it, ten. You are a natural twist. All right, or I's got a tight hold on you. So I am very ineffectual. Got it. All right. I may be. While you're... I'm hissing well, curse while... words at you. <laughs> while you're struggling, I'm quietly like. This is counterproductive to us getting the other tabaxi out of town. As I'm like, fireman carrying you away from the, these bodies. All right. So. Like they killed him, Ori. All right, Ore. Two arrows come flying out of the darkness up ahead. A twenty to hit and a five to hit. Uh, the twenty does hit. Okay, you'll take nine points of piercing damage. That's not good for me. Ito, two arrows come flying at you from off to the side. Uh, that is a nine and a six to hit, so I believe those will both miss. Woo, tank things. Though notably right now, my AC would probably be reduced by two, since I don't have my shield on. Okay. All right. Mizeki, you hear this voice speaking right behind where you've chosen to hid in the alleyway, away from that, speaking in this harsh language that you don't understand, and then... A 17 to hit as he tries to jab his spear into your hindquarters. That definitely hits. All right. You take five piercing damage. Okay. And it is now your turn. So step one, disengage. Uh, and then I'm going to... Run away, okay. uh, forty feet, and then short. Can I see the guy that attacked me? Oh yeah, still? yeah. He he was right behind you. Okay. And then I guess I will short bow him as I run away. Okay. 
Uh, 14? Uh, 14 will hit. Uh, 8 damage. Okay. Because I can't sneak him. All right. Ito, it is your turn. Um, so out of character question, like, in this situation, Elandiel and the Tabaxi have not entered the town, correct? They have left not the set, town. Yeah. They are leaving the town. Okay. So. Hmm. Yeah. They, they are I was, still I was like considering, 80 feet away. Yeah, I was considering yelling for us to all just try to make a dash for the docks and see if we could get out as fast as possible, but... A single longbow shot would kill many people, so... Yeah, that's that's also part of the issue. Um, I mean, Ito moving in the middle of the pack would help solve that, but... We need to leave, is what needs to happen. Yeah, we need to go. Um, how far, generally, are the... Um, uh, presumably null guards who shot Ito just now? Uh, your best guess is that they're over 100 feet away. Ow. Okay. They um, missed you, but you know. So, can Ito see any enemies, like, close up at the moment? Um, you see Mizeki just took a shot down at the alleyway he popped out of. Um, and would I be able to, like, get to that alleyway and presumably fight whatever's inside? Yeah, because Mizeki wasn't that far ahead of you. So. Okay. Um, I think probably as he was running into the town, Ito probably... I'm... Now, I don't know if I can like retroactively say that he put away his longbow last turn. I'm going to assume no. No. No, okay. Uh, well, he's not going to just drop it. Well, where do you pull I it think... out? Yeah, I'm only pulling out a one-handed weapon, so I can just yeah, hold the longbow in one it. hand. Um, so he'll just swap the longbow to his offhand and pull out a whip and whip whatever is in the darkness. Okay. Whip it. Whip it good. Whip it good. That is a 19 plus 6 to hit for 25. 25 hits. Ito whips the darkness. And that is a maximum 8 damage. Okay. Alright, anything else? Um, no chance I can end my turn within five feet of anyone in the party? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'll just generally try to stop this particular knoll from getting to the party, then. I'll just try to block the end of the alleyway or whatever. Okay. Ore, it is your turn. Alandiel continued moving people out and away from the city. That's fine. Uh, I did want to, real quick, sorry, wanted to clarify. Mizeki is saying we need to leave. We need to go. And bleeding heavily. <laughs> grievously? Much more so than grievously, yes. We're below half. Yeah, I'm leaking oil. Uh, what is closer, the mayor's office or the docks? Uh, the mayor's office, but not by much. And how far are we talking? Like, if we're like in a mad dash through town, how far away are we going? Uh, you're going about a quarter of a mile to the mayor's office. And then it's about another 600 feet to the docks from there. And from my perspective, can I couldn't see who shot me. I just arrows out of the darkness, right? Arrows out of the darkness. Uh, okay. Um, you know the direction that that they came from. They came from ahead of you, up north towards the docks. Oh, so they oh, the the direction we would be going is where they came from. Yeah, the ones uh, that shot you. Is there any alleys that look 
from my perspective, a good place to kind of get out of arrow fire. Uh, there are alleys off to both uh, your left and right. Both of them look like they would be dodging the arrow fire from straight, straight up ahead because you'd put a building in between you and where they came from. Uh, I will make a dash for whichever one is closer. Okay, are you dragging Sadzi or letting go of her? I've got Sadzi on. I'm going I'm to move and dash trying to get to where I'm going to whichever side is, is I can get closest to. So I, I get my 30 feet out of it. Okay. Uh, so with 30 feet, you're not going to be able to get into either of the alleys. Uh, by how far? Uh, by about 15 feet. Yeah, not good. Um, is there anything else I can use for cover in the road? Uh, you could lay down next to the bodies that you've killed. Would they yeah, be able to get near that. Ito? Uh, no, Ito's down one of the alleyways. Ways, oh, okay. And he can't make it into those at least from where uh, he's at, not carrying Satsi. So I'm going to I'll make a, a just the regular movement and then for my action I will take the dodge uh, action. Okay. So you drag Satsi 15 more feet. Yeah, 15 more feet to the side. Which, trying to aim for a... Which way? Do you uh, want to go I'm... left or right? Uh, Ito ran off to the right, and Mizeki ran out from the right and said, we need to leave. Uh, I would head for the right. If that square Ito kind of went into that side, I'd go to that direction as well. Okay. Sadzi, it is your turn. Yeah, I'm trying to decide what it... What I should do. Um, you are still restrained, still restrained by Ore. So. Your options are kind of limited to yeah. breaking free from Ore, attacking Ore, or just submitting to Ore's dragging you. I, I think I'll just submit this one time since I'm like, this is probably not going to, uh, to end well All right. as far as me trying to break away from him. Okay, so Sadza, you stop resisting Ore. Okay. And break into sobbing. That's all. He's carrying me. I'm crying. All right. Um, so two more arrows come out of the darkness from up ahead. Uh, that's a 10 and a 7 to hit Sadzi. Neither of those would hit. Okay. And then we've got two more arrows coming out from the darkness off to the side. That is a 14 and a 17 to hit Mizeki. Okay, so I'm probably going to die. Those both hit. Okay, the first one is seven points of damage. I am down. And, okay, which means the second one would be rolled at disadvantage. So it's actually only a nine to hit. That does miss. Okay. Um, and then Ito, the one that you just hit with your whip, steps up and is going to jab his spear into you. That is an 18 to hit. That'll hit. For five piercing damage. And then... Okay. Mizeki, it is your turn. Um, so I guess death saving throws for you. It's super weird that there's not a button to do this, but here we go. How far is Mizeki from Ore? Uh, you would have walked past him going to Edo. Um, so 11, that's a success. Ito, it is your turn. Okay, so how far is Mizeki from Ito? Uh, from Ito, uh, your speed's what, 45, Mizeki? Yeah. So he's 45 feet from you, because you got up to the place where he was before. Right, right, right. Okay. Or no, um, I'm sorry, 40. Oh, 40 feet from you. 
My brain mixed Sadzi and me because she's 35, I'm 40. Okay, I think Ito is probably going to see that we are not in a good spot. And he's just going to start shouting, go now. Uh, so he's going to dash to Mizeki. Okay. Um, and do I have to spend an action to grab Mizeki? Or... No, you, you can grab him as part of your object okay, interaction. Perfect. He's he's a body now, right? That, that counts as an object? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I'm so, not a body yet, technically. So I'm Ito just will resisting. objectify Mizeki for a moment. Um, <laughs> Ito grabs Mizeki, and then he's going to action surge to dash again, and just get as far as possible. Alright, so you had 20 feet left, adding 30 feet, and then cutting that in half to drag the body. You get 25 feet dragging him. You Perfect. could also just give me the ointment that I have on me. Right, I'll do that instead. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so he'll he'll just heal Mizeki instead of that. Um, uh, yeah, he'll so... dash over to Mizeki, and I'm assuming giving him the ointment will take my action surge. Yeah, yes. so, well, finding it will take your action yeah. surge, and so you can do that next turn to heal him. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um... Yeah. And if, I if assume you I'm had it on you, it could ready it as you were moving over there, but finding it on him. Yeah. Yeah, and I assume I'm taking an attack of opportunity from the buddy who just stabbed me. Yep. That's a 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. For six points of piercing damage. Cool. All right. Um, and it is Alandiel's turn. Um, he will start running back towards that, telling the tabaxi to run away. And then it is Ore's turn. So Ito and Mizeki are about 20 feet behind you, Sadzi, er, and, and Ore. You guys are together. So they're 20 feet behind us. And how close are we to the alleyway now? Well, like, still like 20 feet away? You're about 15 feet. Yeah. 15 feet. Um, I will uncarry Sadzi, give her a stern look of, please don't do anything stupid. And I'm going to rush back and help Ito drag Mazeki into the alleyway. So I probably won't help tremendously cover that distance, but that's well, what I'm doing. Um, right now, Ito is not dragging Mizeki. What he's doing is he grabbed the um, Ito is looting off the of body. Mizeki. Right. Yeah. Ito is looting the body for the healing thing to get Mizeki back up, so I mean, if Ore comes over Maybe Ito can hand him the ointment and he can apply it immediately. If if, if I can clear the the distance to get there, which is if he's only twenty feet behind me, um, I will. Uh, gonna hit. I'm gonna cure wounds on him. Oh yeah, that's cheaper than the ointment. Well, that's my last spell slot, so let's find out if it's actually cheaper. He gets eight points back to him. Okay. And then I'm going to start moving towards uh, back to Sadzi towards the alley. Okay. So you now are 10 feet from Sadzi, 10 feet from Mizeki, and Ito, 25 feet from the alley. Um, Ito's and... now feeling kind of stupid that he used his action search to come over here and try to get the ointment out. And Sadzi, it is now your turn. But you do have the ointment out, which is the important part. Now you carry True. the ointment. The power is in your hands. Sati, it is your turn. Okay. Yeah, um, I will um, go into the alley. That should get me like 10 feet down. Uh, so yeah, the, the alley's 15 feet from you. Um, and when you enter that alley, you see that there is a knoll with a spear out, slowly approaching. Okay. Which How far away is the knoll from me? Uh, from you at that point, he's five additional feet into the alley. 
Okay. Can I cast Burning Hands on him? Yes, you can. All right. It's a 14 dex to save. 14 dex. Uh, he gets a six, so that will fail. And that's going to be 13 points of damage for him. All right. You successfully burned him to a crisp. Mm, barbecue. All right. And I enjoy that what this knoll has seen just now is Mizeki runs into the alleyway. The knoll stabs him. Mizeki runs away and shoots him. Ito runs into the alley, hits him with a whip. He stabs Ito. He stabs Ito again as Ito runs away. Sadzi appears and burns him to death. All right. Um, anything else, Sadzi? I think you still have about 10 feet left of movement. No, 15 feet of movement. You've got 35. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. Can I just like kick him to the side and keep going? Uh, so you're going to continue running through the city down the alleyway. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can do that. All right, um, it is the Knoll's turn. So first of all, Ore, two arrows come from, again, ahead of you. That's a nine and a five. They both miss. All right, Ito, two arrows come from the left side alleyway. That is a 14 and a 12. Both miss. All right. Sadzi, three arrows come from up above on the rooftops. That is a 20, a 17, and a 12. First two hit. All right. The first one will deal seven points of damage. The second will deal eight. Okay. I'm very down. Okay. Do you go down on the first one, though? Because that changes the... No, I'm down on the second. The first one got me down to one hit point, and then um, the second one will have me. There's no negative, passed. so yeah, you're just unconscious yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mizeki, it is your turn. You are now conscious. Uh, well, I'm going to make a wisdom save for Mizeki here. Oh, it was almost a one. That's still a nine. Uh, so Mizeki's going to yell, fuck you, fuck this, and run as fast as he can towards where Ellen Deal and the others are. Okay. So it takes him, what, is it half movement to get up? Yep. Man, that hurts me. Yep. So he gets, he can go 60. 60 this round. Plus 40 for dash. He can oh, dash yeah, again. Oh, yeah, because you can oh, dash again as a bonus. 100. Yeah, I can go 100 feet. Okay. Uh, so you make it out of the city gates towards where that that is, um, and you reach Alandiel as he's running back towards the city. Okay. And Ito, and it is... Mizeki's not stopping. He just is going to keep going. Ito, it is your turn. Okay, so um, Mizeki got can up Ito and ran see... away. Okay, can he see that Sadzi went down? Sadzi disappeared into the dark down the alleyway. Crap. Would he have, like, heard something that would indicate she's down? Oh, you would have heard her scream in pain, I'm sure. Okay, so he is holding the ointment, so he's just gonna <laughs> immediately start running back that way. Okay. Uh... Ito is doing a lot of running and not much actual fighting in this fight. Right, so she was... Um... 20 feet away from you to begin with, and she moved her full 30 feet. So, she's 50 feet away from you down the alleyway. Right, so he'll dash, get right behind her, um, or like up beside her, and try to like stand over her protectively, looking for what took her out. Okay. Alright. Alandiel's going to uh, continue running away from... Uh, Mizeki at this point towards the city for everybody else as he hears you all screaming in pain. 
Um, and so, Ori, oh. you'll see Alandiel enter the city again. And it is your turn. And so I don't forget it, Ito put away his bow last turn. <laughs> okay. Okay, so how far am I at this point to the alleyway? I'm, after having doubled back and started heading that direction, I'm probably 20 feet away as well. You're, you were initially 15 feet away, and you moved initially 10 feet away from it, so you're 25 feet away from the alley. But after I healed um, Mizeki, I started heading back. You, well, you moved really 20 good. feet away, and then you moved 10 oh, feet Oh, gotcha, back. gotcha, gotcha. I see what you're saying. Uh, after watching Ido take off in that same alleyway direction and Mizeki run away, uh, I'm heading for the alleyway to help try and see if I can help Sadzi. Okay. So I'm going to do a dat. Well, once I get into the alleyway, can I see that she's down? Uh, do you have dark vision? I do not. Um, so you can't see that she's down until you get really right up next to her. Then I, I would dash until I got to her. Okay, yeah, you dash and you see Ito crouched over her with his shield up. And Sadzi's uh, down on the ground. I put my shield up over my head as well to help protect me a little bit more as well. Okay. Um, Sadzi, it is your turn. Go ahead and give us a death saving throw. So that's just a straight d20. Okay. Yeah, that's a four. Okay, that's a failure. All right, it is now the Knoll's turn. Um, all right, so... Arrows going at Alandiel. That's a four, or sorry, a five and a twelve. Those both miss. What's his AC? Seventeen. And then since again he's the only one that can be seen, uh, that's a fifteen and a thirteen. So those still both miss. And then the three of you that are in the alleyway, let's go two at Ito and then one at Ore. So first two at Ito is a fifteen and a four. Both miss. And then the one at Ore is a 15. That's a miss. Okay. All right. And then it is Mizeki's turn. Uh, so how far away am I from any enemies? I'm pretty far. You're right. pretty far. Like, you've left the city at this point. Good. Uh, at this point, I am going to drink my last potion of healing. Okay. It's 2d4 plus 1. It's 2d4 plus 2. 2. Nice. 7. And then, um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out exactly what he would do. Because, like, he wouldn't just keep running out into the wilderness. It's dark and he can't see. Yeah, uh, catch he'll up probably, to the tabaxi. Yeah, he'll probably catch up to the tabaxi and just stay with them. Okay. And And be very restless. Is it a walled city? Uh, no. It is not. And how how far from this side of the city is it to the like the edge of the coast where the from, from where Mizeki and um, the other Tabaxi are to like the coast to like work their way up towards the docks to work to go through the city is a yeah, little... but like yeah, to go through the city, it's a little oh. over a quarter of a mile from the south entrance to the north entrance where the docks are. Right, but could they follow the beach to the and keep the city kind of to their side? To skirt around the city? Yeah. And get to the docks? It's gonna be a couple miles around. Okay. Okay. 
I was just curious. I forgot whose turn is it. It it's uh, Mizaki just went, so it's Ito. Ah, sorry. Um, so he'll use his action to heal Sadzi and bonus action to second wind on himself. Okay. How much healing is the ointment? Uh, it's um two d eight plus two. So that'll be eleven total. And you estimate that used about half of the ointment that was left. So there is one okay. more application of the ointment left. Okay, and time to roll second one. All right, so Sadzi, you healed eleven. Yeah, 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 I'm not dead anymore. And I heal. Oh, I forget the exact amount I gain. I heal seven. Okay. All right. Um, it is Alandiel's turn, and he will see you guys down the alleyway, and yell out, "Come on, we need to go!" And then we'll see the Knolls heading down the alleyway towards him from off to the side. And let's throw out a Sacred Flame at them. They make their save. Uh, and then he will move and continue running out of the city once he's called for you guys. All right, Ore, it is your turn. So, would we be able to, from Ore's perspective, get to the other side of the alley that we're in and make our way out of town from there? Uh, this alley goes on for a while. Your fastest entrance is to go back the way you came and out the city. Got it. Um, I will shout to uh, Sadzi and Ido. Please hurry, and I'm going to dash on my way out of town as fast as I can. Okay. All right. As you exit the alleyway and uh, continue on running down, you can see Alondiel just as he throws the sacred flame. As it lights up, you can see that there are two gnolls with their longbows approaching Jean from the other alleyway. Are they? Would they be a hindrance to... Us getting out of this alley and getting out of town from where they're coming in, or nope. is it like parallel to us? They're on the opposite side of the main road from you. Gotcha, gotcha. I'll, I'll head towards um, when I'm dashing out of here. I'll head towards um, a lawn deal. Okay. Sabzi, it is your turn. Um, two questions. One. Did I happen to see where the arrows that hit me came from? And how tall are the buildings? Uh, so the buildings are about 20 feet tall. And mm -hmm. they came from above you and slightly towards the east. Hmm. I was trying to figure out if maybe it'd be worth it to throw a firebolt in that direction. Um, but I don't know if I can just kind of blindly throw a firebolt. Can I? Uh, you should have dark vision, right? I do. Yeah, so you can see them up ahead on the roof, um, about 60 feet away from you. And they are closing in their distance. Hmm. Running is slightly more important. I assume I can't. Cast and move at the same time, can I? Uh, so, well, you're prone, so standing up will take half your movement, and then you can cast, which will take your action, and so that would leave you half your movement to run away. Okay, yeah, let's skip the trying to fire on them. Um, so, yeah, get me up from prone, so that leaves me with roughly 15 feet, plus if I dash, that'll give me 50 so yeah, I'll uh, I'll do that and follow Ore and everyone else trying to get out of town. Okay. 
Ore stays uh, just a little bit ahead of you because um, he was able to move 60 feet. Um, it is now the Knoll's turn. So first off, let's do two at Ore. Uh, that's a 15 and a 10. Bill. Two at Sadzi. That's an 11 and a 21. 21 wood. Okay. That is nine points of piercing damage. And Oof. and three at Ito. That is a nine, a twenty-two for eight points of damage. And then a six to hit. Did just barely more than what I just healed myself. Okay. All right, uh, and then it is Mizeki's turn. Mizeki, at this point, you have caught up with the tabaxi who are running away. Can I see the other people getting shot at? Or am I, are they in the, in the dark to me? They're in the dark to you. Okay. Uh... I don't know. I mean, this is this is. I'm gonna take out my lantern and light it. Okay. And then move maybe thirty feet back. All right, back towards the city. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can spot anyone and call out for them. Okay. Yeah. So with your lantern lit, you can see Alandiel, um, Ore, and Sadzi are all starting to run out of the city towards you. Um, Alandiel okay. in the lead, followed by Ore, followed by Sadzi, but there's no sign of Ito. Okay. So I guess then he'll yell, where's Ito? Okay. And just sort of stand there looking confused and disoriented. All right. And then it is Ito's turn. Yeah. Um, now that Sadzi is back up, he's basically going to take a sprint out of the alleyway, uh, dash again. I'm not sure that I have any other things I can really do. Okay. Yeah, so 60 feet, you'll get just ahead of Sadzi. And see. Okay, yeah. If if he can end his movement beside Sadzi, he will do that. And he'll tell her to stay close to him. Okay, yeah, you can stop by Sadzi, stopping short a bit. All right. All right, Alondiel is going to stop and wait for you guys to pass and is going to throw another their sacred flame right that's what it's called yeah down this time at the ones that are coming from up north in the city um they make their save uh but again you can all now see that these two are closing in in because they're within range of sacred flame so they're only about 30 feet away from sadzi and Ito, who have stopped in the back. Um, so, Ore, it is your turn. Uh, Ore, kind of looking over his shoulder, making sure that everybody made it out of the alley, is going to... Uh, who, how close are any combatants to where we are now? From where you are, there are two of them coming from the north, about 40 feet away. Hey, you saw them for a split second as the sacred flame light lit up the area. But there's nothing else that I'm seeing like where we're where we're headed out of town. Um, no. None in the direction can, that you are heading. And can I see Mizeki's uh lantern? You see Mizeki's lantern up ahead. Everyone can uh, see my lantern. Yeah, as long as I see everyone following us and I just kind of like this way and I head towards Mizeki. I'll dash back to Mizeki. Okay. All right. You will make it out of town with that dash, running past Alondiel, who is just kind of stopping, waiting for you all to pass. Um, and then it is Sadzi's the turn. As they go. Sadzi, what would you like to do? Um, Am I out of town yet? No. No. Okay. Keep running. Okay. So, so move and dash. Move Yes. Okay. Moving dash. You'll run right up and catch up to Ore. 
since you're faster and he was 10 feet ahead of you. Running past Alondiel as you do so. All right, and then it is the gnoll's turn. Uh, so the two gnolls behind are going to run up to Ito, pulling out their spears, dropping their bows as they do so. That is a 9 and a 12 to hit. I believe those will both miss. Yeah. All right. The other two from the alley are going to continue shooting their bows. Uh, these will go at Alondiel. That's an a 8 and a 7, so those will both miss. The three from the rooftop are going to continue running along the rooftop. And shoot will go two at Ito and one at Elandiel. That's a seven and a 13. And then that's an 18 at Elandiel, so that will hit him for nine points of damage. And then it is Mizeki's turn. So Mizeki, you do see that Ito has now come out, but you see that he is now engaged by two gnolls and that there are still arrows flying from multiple directions towards the group. Okay. Um, Zeki failed again, so uh, he's going to draw his rapier and charge. How far away am I from the closest knoll to Ito? From the closest knoll to Ito? Uh, or that he's engaged to? You're about a hundred feet away. Okay. Very far. Yes. So he won't draw his rapier, then he'll just keep his short bow. Okay. Um, I will move 40 feet back and fire at the guy. Okay. Um, I guess using my free interact to set down my lantern. Okay. A 14. A 14 will hit. And 8 damage. Okay. And that's all I've got right now. All right. I can't Ito. exactly hide. Ito, it is your turn. Okay, so... Oh, I can dash. I'll, I'll dash another 40 feet closer. Okay. I forget I can do that. So you are back into town, then. Yeah. Ito it was probably starting to turn around at being stabbed but he does see Mizeki coming closer, and he's generally just going to yell at Mizeki, no, keep going. Because um, he's just saying, everyone get out, I'll be here, you guys run. Um, and then he... Is Sadzi still beside him, or did she keep going? She ran. She's up by Ore now. Okay. Not that you can so, see them anymore, because Mizeki's lantern is past them. Okay. And Mizeki is... Like 20 feet. How far? He's 20 okay. feet behind you now. Okay. So, sorry, I'm getting he a little confused with panicked. the movement here. Yep. Um, yeah, so you've got two gnolls right next to you. And then behind okay. you, 20 feet, is Mizeki. Behind Mizeki, 10 feet, is Alondiel. And then... 30 feet beyond Alondiel is um, Sadzi and Ore, who have run. And then about 150 feet at this point is the Tabaxi. Okay, okay. so... Um, Ito is... He put away his longbow last turn. Mm -hmm. So he's going to, in his now empty hand, pull out a hand axe to go with his whip. And okay. he's just going to start dual wielding for a moment. Okay. Since he doesn't really have the action to spare to don his shield properly. He's just going to try to attack. Um, is either of the ones fighting me hurt at the moment? Uh, one of them just took an arrow to the head. Perfect. Um, I'll go for him then. Okay. It's a 15 to hit. Okay, a 15 will hit. That's 6 slashing damage. Okay. So, 
as you take your whip out and crack it at them, you see as it magically elongates and wraps around both of the gnolls' necks. As you pull it tight, both of their heads just completely pop off. And you feel this surge of power within you that you didn't know was there for a brief moment. And then it subsides. Ito looks at the whip for a moment and he goes, Normally that happens with the other weapon I'm currently holding, but sure, I'll take it. Run. And then he's just going to turn and start moving. Okay, you'll catch up Sick to yells, What the hell? Um, actually, he's only going to move 20 feet because he wants to stop beside Mizeki. Okay. He's just trying to use interception one time. All right. This will be your second time. Uh, Landiel is looking at you guys and, and saying, why are you stopping? Run, get out of here. And it's going to throw a sacred flame down the alleyway where there are still two more coming. Oh, they finally fail their save uh, and will take some damage from sacred flame. One whole point of it. That's great. The long deal was on fire. All right. Um, or more accurately, the gnolls are. It's sacred flame, so it's not even really fire. But, you know, it's radiant damage. And then, Ore, it is your turn. Ore? Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought I hit my button and I didn't even think about it for a moment. I apologize for that. So, how far are those, the next two sets of guards that were just targeted? Uh, since you have run away, you are out of the city and can't see them because they have not emerged from the alleyway yet. Okay, I will... Uh, everybody else is like 30 feet away from me, but I can't see them at this point. Alondiel is 30 feet away from you. Everybody else Alondiel. is further away. And Alondiel I... keeps yelling, telling people not to stop and to keep running. I look to see and say, let's keep going. And I will continue to dash out of town. Okay. Towards the other tabaxis. Sadzi. Uh... Okay, we're still running. Um, is anyone engaged? Still? No. I mean, I thought we... Okay. No one is currently engaged. Um, I'll just keep moving with everyone else. Okay. Alright, it is the Null's turn. Um, they're not quite close enough to get into melee, but they will emerge from the alleyway, but they'll take two shots as they do. Um, at Elandiel... That is a 7 and a 20, so the 20 will hit for 8 points of damage. And then the 3 on the rooftop will also emerge from the alleyway to where you can see them up on the roofs. 3 arrows down, let's go 2 at Ito, 1 at Mizeki. Uh, so that's a 9 and a 12 to hit Ito. And a five to hit Mizeki. So I believe those all miss. Yeah. All right. And then I sure hope. Is Mizeki's turn. Uh, I am going to. How far away are these guys from? Uh, so they are on the rooftop, about 30 feet away from you for the three on the rooftop. And the other two in the alley are only at this point about 10 feet away from you with their bows still out. But you can see that they are going for their spears. Okay, um, drop the short bow, pull out, uh, let's see, can he pull out, he can't pull out the rapier and the dagger, both, Correct. because stupid rules about drawing weapons. So, rapier, and charge towards the nearest one. Okay. 24. 24 will hit. 
and then nine, and I can't sneak attack him, right? Because he's not nothing special about it. Nothing special. He's not engaged with anybody, so just nine. Yep. Okay. And then I will disengage and move back the remaining 30 feet. Okay, are you headed out of town, or are you just moving right back to where you were, the 10 feet? Um, back back away, back the way I was, but an additional 20 feet past two. Okay, so you're heading still into the city, back into the alleyway. Okay. I, whichever way everyone's running away, I'm running away the direction they're running. Okay, you're running out of the city. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Ito, your turn. So Ito is also going to continue moving away. <laughs> All right. Are you going Probably your full last. sixty or just thirty? Um. Is there anyone between me and going the full sixty? Yes. Party or enemy? Yes. Yes. Both Alondiel and Mizeki are still in okay. town. Um. He's actually going to stick by Mizeki's side. Um, and dual wielding galore. Okay. All right. Uh, Londiel's going to yell again, Why do you keep stopping? Run away! And is going to throw a sacred flame. Uh, they will make their save, and he will run out of the city. Mizeki will yell back, um, they're attacking us. Uh, very clearly out of sorts. Yeah, I'm just... I forgot to roll the attacks for the dual wielding there, with him trying to help Mizeki. Okay, if he can so, get so, within range for that. So you're running to the enemies, not to Mizeki? Oh! I did not realize those were two different options. Never mind. Mizeki ran okay. up, stabbed He's... a dude, and then ran away. Okay. He's running to Mizeki. Okay. All right. Ore and Sadzi, do you plan on turning around and coming back, or can we just skip you at a, in initiative at this point? Uh, I would probably move up a little bit and kind of wait to make sure everybody's following us. But if uh, after like a moment they're not showing up, Ore is going to head back in. Okay, well, we'll skip you for a couple of rounds, and then if you don't see anybody, we'll get back to you. I hold my action for if anyone shows up. No, you hold your action for if nobody shows up. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep running. Um, if there's a likelihood of seeing more gnolls coming to attack us, I could ready a firebolt, but I kind of doubt I would need it. Okay. All right. Um, the gnolls are going to close in on. Um, I just forgot your names, Ito and Mizeki. Uh, so one attack each with their spears. So against Mizeki, that's an eight. Against Ito, that's a fourteen. Woo, miss. All right. The three with the longbows on top of the roof are going to shoot. We'll do two at. Uh, Ito, that's a 10 and an 11. And then one at Mizeki, that is a 6. These guys are really bad. Shush! Alright. Um, and then it is Mizeki's turn. Okay, so nobody got hit, right? Nobody got hit. And Okay, so his action doesn't change. Um, and the two guys are still 10 feet away, or they charge us and they're stabbing at us? They are right next to you, stabbing you with spears. Cool. Draw in my dagger. Okay. As my my free, and then rapier, and then dagger. Okay. And Ito is next to one of them, yeah? Yeah. So I whichever mean, technically one Technically, you're both good. next to both of them. Fantastic. Then the one I stabbed before, uh, 16. 16 will hit. And that does 5 plus 7, so 12 total. Okay, he goes down. And then dagger on the other guy. Okay. Uh, 20 to hit. 20 will hit. That should be a short sword, not a dagger. 
Can that be a short sword instead? Uh, you said you had pulled out the dagger? It's fine, dagger. Um, it's a wait. defensive two. I roll bad. Five. Yeah, five. Okay. It's fine. Dagger's fine. It makes sense. Uh, and that's all the stuff, yeah. Uh, or actually, no, he'll still try to run away again. The first weapon can't be a rapier. That's right. Yeah, I was can't. That. Never mind. I hate that about the rapier. I always forget. Um, Stupid. So rapiers in real life don't work like that. Yeah. So no dagger. The second one doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll do the same thing. I'll disengage and run back forty feet. Okay. All right, Ito, oh. it is your turn. You have one no on you and three more on rooftops with longbows that are approaching. And. Uh, Mizeki just ran away after stabbing a dude to death. Um, is the one still in front of me injured at all? Nope. Has not been a hit. No. Okay. Um, he's at the point now he's not going to fight someone who's fresh into this fight. So, but what he is going to do is um, attempt to shove him prone. Okay. The signature. I mean, at this point, we've been dropping them pretty quick. That's a 13? That does not beat his 20. Now you have to okay. stab him. Yeah. Well, no, I can't. <laughs> oh, I guess I could with my offhand, but... um, No, he's more concerned about... He was just going to run and follow Mizeki. Um, he was just hoping to get the guy prone so that he couldn't catch up to us. Um, so yeah, Ito will move to, towards Mizeki again. I'm assuming Mizeki moved the full Mizeki 40, moved 40, 40, yeah, so you won't be able to yeah, catch him. Yeah, he won't catch up, but he'll head that way. Okay. Uh, eight on the, uh, attack of opportunity. So... Woo, another miss. Yep. Um, and then Alundiel's gonna throw off one more sacred flame at that guy. Um, he makes his save, and then Alondiel's going to continue bucking at 30 feet away, passing Mazeki as he goes. Um, Ore and Sadzi, we're going to skip you. The three gnolls, um, the one with his spear out is going to run up and charge Ito. That's a 13 to hit. And then Another man. Three longbow attacks on you. That is a 20, an 18, and a crit. Um, That's not quite as nice as the awful rolls so far. They decided, yeah, right at the end. So let's find out if, you know, that second one's going to end up being with disadvantage. So that's six points of damage to you with the first hit. Still up. Yeah, we're starting from 22 here. Okay. Second attack deals seven points of damage. I'm starting to worry. And the crit deals the least of them all five points of damage. Ito is still up. Okay. Where's the ointment? Ito has it. In Ito. Ito has it, yeah. You should use it on your turn. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I think so. Mizeki, it is your turn. Okay, so... There is one, like one null second. on Ito, ten feet behind you, and the three on the rooftop with their longbow still out. Who are now okay. about a hundred feet from you, or seventy feet from you. He's yeah. gonna move up to the null next to Ito and attack it with his rapier. Okay. Uh, 23. 23 hits. And then 9 plus... So 15. 15? Yeah. Nice. You're saying... Okay. And... And then he's gonna stay there. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's it. Alright, Ito, your turn. So 
So Ito is going to use the ointment. Okay. So that's your action. So 2d8 plus 2. That'll heal him for 8. Okay. And that's the last of the ointment. So it is now empty. And he will... Huh. Nizaki's back, so he will stay in melee. Okay. Shouting for Mizeki to leave. All right. Um, Alandiel is going to be booking it. Um, Ore, you see Alandiel coming down while you've been waiting. So people Good. are still coming. Uh, I will continue to wait until the, the rest of the party is catching up to us. Okay. It is the Null's turn. So we're going to stab at Mizeki. That is a 15 to hit. That very sadly hits. Okay. That is six piercing damage. Ah, interception. Okay. You're going to roll it? Reduce that by six. So zero damage. Okay. Yay. And then longbow. Let's do first shot at um, Ito. That is a... 13 to hit. Miss. Second shot at Ito. That is a 22 to hit. Hit. Oh no. That is 7 points of damage. Third shot at Mizeki. That is a 17 to hit. Yeah. For 6 points of damage. Alrighty. Okay. And then it is Mizeki's turn. And the guy next to us is still up? Yes, yes he is. And Ito oh, is dear. down? No, is Ito I'm down? at five. You are at f yeah. Oh, right, you just healed with the ointment, yes. So okay. Rapier on the guy next to us, 19. Okay. 19 hits. Uh, five damage plus... Uh, nine total. Nine? Okay, he goes down. Uh, okay, and then see... Because he's taken down an enemy. That is sufficient to flee. Uh, so Mizeki will run 40 feet towards the away. Okay. Ito, it is and your turn. Can he hide Ito. at all? Is he out of sight of the guys on the roof? Ito is... Uh, no, you are not out of their sight. Okay. Ito is going to run to Mizeki again. Um, and ask in what is possibly a racially charged question, whether he can ride Mizeki, because Mizeki is quite a bit faster than himself. I believe technically Mizeki could carry him, but you can't, like, you wouldn't be combat capable in any way. Yeah, I, I know the... It'd be like someone giving you a piggyback. Removed from, yeah, I know they were removed from Centaur. Yeah, yeah, so it would operate like him carrying you, which would half his speed, making him slower than you. Yeah. Well, I can okay. still go. I would still go sixty feet. It would be the same as us both going sixty feet, because I can go one hundred. Or, yeah, I but can go one hundred twenty. You can go one hundred twenty, 120 if not burdened by me. So. Yeah. But he, I can get us sixty feet he'd away. He'd be quicker to once. say. Yeah, you'd be better be to just to keep running. You go. Yeah. So then he'll move the remaining twenty feet past Mizeki and stop. Okay. All right, um, Alandiel is going to keep running. Ore, you see Ido and Mizeki coming. Three more arrows are going to get launched in your direction. So first one, Mizeki. That is a five. Second one, Ido. That is a five. And third one, Ito. That is a five. I rolled three twos in a row. <laughs> Hooray. Thank God for these guys' incompetency. All right, um, and then at this point, you guys have left the city. If you're going to continue running, we can end combat. Yeah, yeah. He nobody got hit, so Mizeki doesn't have to roll again, so he just runs. Okay. At this point, is it possible now that we're out of town to skirt the town and make our way back to the docks the long way? 
I feel like first we need to just get out of sight of the town because they they are probably not going to let us just walk away after yeah, killing I, several of their guards. I think the same thing as we're like working our way back towards everybody else because I wait for you guys to show up uh, to me before I start heading back to everyone else. Um, I have no idea what to do. Like, uh, like we should be like heading a good deal away from town just in case they started to try and follow us. I mean, we just show up and kill a whole bunch of guards and took off. They were yeah, I think right now we just need to run. <laughs> as Probably run as for possible. like an hour. Yeah, can. run as far as possible. Preferably keeping out of sight whenever possible. You know, the good Have stuff. we encountered any sort of defensible location at all in our trapezing back and forth? Uh, the most defensible location you've seen was the Shattered Dust headquarters. Okay, but nothing Five like miles in away. between. Nothing really in between. So, How long would it take us to get back there? Because that's more than an hour, right? At a fast travel pace, it's just over an hour, I believe. Uh, it's like an hour and 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, maybe at a fast travel pace. So, yeah, because a fast travel pace is four miles in an hour. So that would be an hour and a half. I don't feel like that's the safest place to be, but at the same time, it does have Balliste. Well, we could uh, change course. I still think it's not a bad idea to head towards the water. Uh, kind of get put our backs to the water. Get off. I'm not sure road. I want our backs to about anything at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, do any of us in character know uh, if gnolls have dark vision? I mean, it seems pretty clear they do. Like, oh yeah. oh yeah. Their I, actions I, I, thus far have made it clear that they can see in the dark. Oh, here's a note. Um another point in favor of the fort. If we can get those horses, we might have a slightly better shot at something. <laughs> if we need to get through that town as fast as possible, like whenever we attempt that again, cuz presumably we still have to get through there and get a boat. The problem is, how do we get through? So if we can get someone through on a horse and secure a ship and then meet the rest of us on the water outside of town somewhere. I could conceivably get to the docks less noticed. I can change into a fast, smaller animal and skirt the town. That, that could work, yeah. I just don't know how I would let you guys know what I'm doing. Once I I'm feel there. like um, our best bet is do that, skirt the town, get to the docks, and see if you can get in touch with The people that brought us over by the boat, were there any tabaxi boat people? No. Okay, so were the boat people all gnolls? No. Uh, were they so, turtles? So there were turtles that were on the ship, so the captain of your ship that brought you uh, yeah, was I'm... a turtle. Okay. I feel like, or if you can get there and find a captain to talk to and convince them to come pick us up like along the shore a ways away with the understanding of like these are people that were imprisoned by this gang and we've liberated them at the mayor's orders and we're trying to get them safely away we just can't get them through town and see if someone's yeah, uh, obviously, sympathetic to that type of we, a cause we tried to bring them to town and were attacked by the guards <laughs> right was there a heavy guard presence of Knowles on the docks when we arrived uh, there wasn't a heavy guard presence it would probably be best if you go presence. inside the boat, 
Like if you can talk to someone while hidden. Well, that's okay. That's a good question. Could we have potentially have a uh, a boat captain head again south along the coast and pick us up further down the coast? Yeah, that that's I think is our best bet if we can do something like that, where they can that's, leave that's kind and pick of, us up. Right. That's kind of what I was thinking about by getting near the water is kind of utilizing that somehow, and that's maybe that's the way to do it. Let's try that. I think that's our best plan right now. And I think Ito at this point is making a mental note that whenever we are in a place where we will need a boat sometime soon, memorize the next three days worth of boat schedules. That's a very good mental note to make. Zaki is preparing to fisticuff Sadzi. Let's, Let's get somewhere we feel a little bit more secure. Not, yeah. I don't want to go back to the the. So I think place. plan one is we run away towards the fort by about an hour. We won't get completely to the fort, but that'll be far enough away that we should be able to see anyone coming for us. Yeah. Uh, that will reach the camp that you passed. Oh, okay. Let's go to there then. That's a good place to start. Okay. And then we can Might figure out some more. To get a rest is as needed at that place. Yeah, we could. I realize that having disguised self as a centaur is awful because I can't change where my limbs are. You, you can make, make yourself look, look like, like a, a different centaur. centaur. I, yeah, I can look like another centaur <laughs> or a camel. Or a horse. Yeah, I was going to say, if you pull your arms, arms, you're real tight. Yeah, a horse with arms. That's, yeah, why don't we... a little weird. We could potentially spend a couple of hours trying to disguise everybody and skirt the town. I so feel like we... I feel like the, the animal plan is our best bet. It only risks one person yeah. trying to, like, be sneaky. Uh, are we going to try and get a long rest before we do this plan? Now I that it's night? I think it might be worth trying. I think it I would be worth trying as well. I don't know I, if I we'll would... get away with it, but I think it would be worth trying. Yeah, because Ito can no longer heal from short rests, and he That's is kind it. of in a position where he very you... much needs to. Do you I, have any thoughts? Here. Yeah, I'm I'm out of spells, and I can, I I don't have any more hit dice for short rests. Yeah, I'm just going with the flow, basically. Okay, wild shape. One more wild shape. Let's try that. Let's um yeah, let's let's try for a long rest of the camp, I think, is our plan. Okay. I agree. Are you setting a watch? We will ask the prisoners if they can watch for us, please. And then we will explain the plan to them and then see if any of them are willing to post up a watch for us. My sentry's rest will allow me to watch while I'm resting. Okay. But you don't have dark vision. Uh, no, but we could set up a campfire. And if I position myself just inside the tent watching for the campfire, if anything moves around, I can raise the alarm pretty quickly. Yeah. The issue is just people can be outside the campfire range and shoot you. Sure. Sure. I, it's no so, perfect plan. So. Yeah. I feel like our best bet is plop down a campfire near the edge of the camp area. And then or you no can be, yeah, or or yeah, no campfire, and you're away from the middle, watching towards it as best you can. Yeah, I mean that's. Or that's just possible. sitting in the tent with us. That might be our best bet: is we sit in the big tent, and you can just sit at the entrance. Actually, if we all sit in the big tent, maybe we can set up some sort of a perimeter alarm of the tent, ropes and pans and something. Anybody comes to the tent, I'm already conscious of them being there and I can I wish Stefan was here everybody else's attention. He could cast alarm. All right, let's do that. We'll we'll set up a perimeter and ask the former prisoners if any of them would be willing to keep watch after explaining the plan of like we want to try and get a boat to meet us along the shore. They'll kill us as soon as they see us. We're staying in the back. Fair. 
Hopefully none of them come in the back. If so, if you spot something strange, please scream immediately. I thought we were staying we in the do. tent. Yes. Yeah, we're all staying in the tent. Enemies may come. If any of you spot anything strange, please shout and yell and scream immediately. All right. So, how are you guys set up in the tent? I'm guessing you're putting Ore with his sentry's rest at the front, at yep. the entrance. Yeah. Okay. As soon as we figure out the tents, um, Mizeki will be probably in the middle, um, because he wants to be, and then he's gonna go yell at Sadzi. <laughs> okay. Yusho is probably going to be near Ore. And then maybe the rest of the prisoner people kind of in a circle around the middle. So nobody like at the edges of the tent. Okay. If we can afford it spacing wise. Um, there's also the large table in here there where you had put the guy on to torture him. So you could move that towards the we'll front as table. well. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a plan. We'll move the table out to kind of block the way a bit okay. and free up space give ourselves a little chance of having some cover if they decide to try and come in. Okay. All right. So, you all take your long rest. Ore, you don't notice anything throughout the night. As the sun comes no sound. up in the morning, you may all take your long rest. Yay. Yay. I gained back a spell slot. I gained back 29 health. I and seven. all of my features. I only got 7 health. Alondio got features. all 6 of his slots back and healed Yeah, up. our spellcasters were drained, man. They were we tapped did a out lot before of you went back into town. Yeah. Yeah. I only had the two first levels. It was, it was a there. bold plan, and it didn't work, and nobody died on our side, at least, thankfully. Uh, there, this there was, was two chance. fights in a we row that really could have gone better for us. Yes. All right. So, the morning is here. You now know what the mayor said about him not having control of the town guard. Definitely true. Bringing the tabaxi to town, not the best idea. But it is a new day. Did we want to try to disguise anybody before we even, well, I guess, before anybody makes their way to towards town? Or is it just going to be me heading to town in animal shape, skirting the town? Because I'm not walking through town trying to get there. Mizeki will point out that, unfortunately, his magic capabilities for disguise can only make him look like another centaur. But he can try to use his physical skills to disguise someone more directly. Unfortunately... All of us are sort of distinct and not nulls. Ito will also point out that he does also know how to use a disguise kit. It was always yeah, quite handy when he was a gladiator. That's only useful if we can make someone look like a null. <laughs> At this point, no, we basically. don't have to look like nulls. I think we just need to not look like ourselves and not have other tabaxi with us. We, when we well, have yeah, but the, the point being that anyone that isn't a null right now is probably going to get severely scrutinized and questioned. True. Should we make our way to the coast before I head into town? I 
I think that's not a bad idea. I can draw a diagram. One moment. Uh, the water, respective to us, the water is like along the south of us or north of us or? Uh, so the water is to the north of you and to the east of you. So it's on kind of like, uh, Kuche is on like the northeast corner of like the tail of the wilds. I kind of want to test those sending stones to see if there's a match in there, but once we do that, we're kind of screwed for the day. For that set, for that half of a set of sending stones. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's test the one that we know we got. Yeah. From we'll the test the one that we know player. is good, and then hopefully we have the other one. Yeah. Right. So who picked up the one sending stone and who picked up the five? Uh, Mizuki has the five. All right, and you, so he can you pull said them out. you labeled them. What did you label them all yeah. as? He gave them just symbols, like star, square, triangle, circle. Okay. All right. And did you label the other one at all, the one that whoever else picked up that you got from the camp? Uh, I, I think probably would have taken it and kept it separate from the one that I know is Zamza's, uh, Zamza's yeah. stone. Okay. So we would probably mark Zamza's stone with a little cat and a Z. <laughs> That works. I, I still have Zamza stone in like a special pocket, so it's out of. Zamza's with an X. Oh, good point. Zamza's with an X. I didn't know that. Nobody ever oh, asked how to spell it. I mean, I didn't need to know. It was uh, unimportant. He's going to be really with a Z. I had it noted. My with name. A Z. I actually have it in my gear with a Z. How dare you? My name has spelled. an X in it. I mean, it does have a Z in it, but it's X A M Z A. My Zending Stone has a first name. All right. I drew a map. So basically, there's the town to the northeast on the tip right. Oh, my map's backwards. Flip my map horizontally. <laughs> I, was, I was like, that's not right. <laughs> not, not that the viewers it's can see that enough. map, but you know. I it's, drew a better map. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, just rotate it 90 degrees. I just flipped it. Mm -hmm. So we're down here in the thing, and there's like a triangle, right? So we can travel towards the coast diagonally and then have um, Ore meet us there with the boat. Yep. Well, I'm, let's, I would actually, as a group, let's go there, and then Ore will head into town, uh, skirting would... the town. I think it would be better for Ore to go towards the town immediately. The sooner we get find out if we can get the boat, the better, because we don't want to just be standing on the coast by ourselves, like without any protection or anything. So you confirm we can get the boat, and then we'll meet you. We'll travel towards the coastline diagonally. Good. Uh, so when we tested the the camp stone versus the five stones, does it connect to one of them? Uh, it does. It connects to the one that Mizeki labeled with a circle. Circle stone. So, so we'll I mark can... the other one with a circle too. So I take the one that received the message uh, and say, I'll let you know when I'm on my way with a boat. Stay safe. And I head into town. Do not be a suspicious animal. He's going all to be a suspicious animal. Yeah. He shows up as a rocktopus. Because all, all, ah. all of my animals are mechanical, so like to skirt the town. I mean, I won't look like yeah. a forge. It'll be a mechanical yeah. Don't yeah. Don't show up as a whale, basically. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you know what? I have an option. If this is capable, this is all rocky terrain, though, right? Correct. Would a giant badger be able to tunnel under the town? Yeah, I'd allow it. Did I recognize a good place near the docks that would make sense for me to be able to come up out of the ground? No, it wasn't something that you were thinking about at the time you were at the docks. As a giant badger, would I have 
a sense of where I'm going and what's above me. Let's see, what does it say the giant badger can do? I don't believe that's something that you would know. Uh, he does have dark vision, passive perception of 17. Yep. Perception of plus 7. Keen smell. Yep, that wouldn't tell you where you are in location. But yeah, you could definitely burrow 10 feet at a time through the rock. And to cross town or to kind of make my way through, about how long do you think that would take? 10 feet a minute? Um, so crossing town from the south entrance to the north entrance where the dock is, is just over a quarter of a mile. So let's calculate that out. Welcome to math. It's, it's almost a party. It's ten feet, if it's 10 feet per round. Well, he can do 20 feet per feet round. Oh, like yeah. Dash. Yeah, so that's 200 per minute. So it's and then, 96 rounds. Yeah, so almost 10 minutes. And that's if you start as soon as you reach the south side of the city. And I feel like dashing for 10 minutes straight is probably some sort of exhaustion check. Possibly. Uh, our other options are like a bunny, a wolf, a spider, a horse, a panther. I have no idea what an onyx is, a mountain goat, a mastiff, a giant wolf spider, giant badger. I mean, you could so, always just go small and go with like a yeah, rat or a spider, a something small that's animal. going to be yeah. very hard to see. Small desert animal. Well, I was I was even thinking a spider. Like, no. Again, the I type of animal's not going that. to matter because he decided that he wanted all of his animals to be mechanical since he's a forged. So yeah, he will always look I, like a I, machine. I've Curses. already flavored it. Every every one of my animals is mecha, so it's a mecha robo spider. squirrel. It is. Now, if you go for an incredibly small spider, they won't notice yeah. it's mechanical. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a spider on the outskirts of town, uh, that's, it's, what, 20 feet around. We're so going to come up against the speed. asshole with a telescope looking for yeah. spiders. Yeah, yeah. All right. That sounds good. Tiny spider thing. Well, spider would be half as many, because it's twice as fast as your burrow speed. So instead of 96 oh, right. rounds... It'd be, what is that, 48? Yeah, I can do math. Yes. 43. No, 96 like divided by 10 no, is 48. 48. Oh, I thought you said 86. My bad. Yeah. So how, how, how long is that? So if it's 40, uh, it's what? Around uh, uh, so 10 rounds 48. Minute, so. Uh, rounds is uh, 288 seconds. So that's 4.8 minutes. 4.8 minutes to circle the town? That's to go or straight go through. through town. I'd still want to circle town. I don't want to leave any of this to chance. Okay. Uh, so town's much longer than it is. Right. Uh, so it's much longer going um, east to west than it is north to south. Uh, so it's going to take you a lot longer if you're going to go all the way around town, because town is about two miles long that way. So, and town is, is it's right against the water anyway, so yes. me taking it, the it beach does nothing. It is a port city, nothing. yes. Right. Uh, yeah, I would skirt the town. Like, it would be the safest way to, to go around it would be to skirt it, so I'd, I'd follow the outskirts of it. Okay. All I right. guess it really wouldn't matter how long that takes me because I can be this spider for a couple of hours. Yeah, and it, it's not going to take you because you can do it for what half your druid level in hours right now. I and think it's two hours. Let me double check really quick here. I'm pretty sure it's half your druid level rounded down, so it's an hour uh, at a time. 
uh, yeah, one hour before reverting back to your normal form. And okay. you can do it twice, it two, two hours. Yeah. Or, True. So it depends on the creature's speed that you select, but uh, most creatures would be able to get around the city, either going to the east or the west around and north um, in the hour time frame. But yeah, I would I would choose a spider. Keep my keep my distance. Stay a little hidden as best I can. Um, am I able to turn into this onyx? Is that a, what is an? I don't know what the onyx is. It looks like it's a cat. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm looking at other onyx is like from for. onyx is from acquisitions incorporated. I believe it is uh, not a valid wild shape. Oh, it shows it's a valid under my search. Because uh, that has a range because of it's technically, it's like, Because wouldn't... it's technically a beast. The problem is, um, yeah, it was made for a quest where the players were all made very, very small. Gotcha. So okay, gotcha. It's it comparatively, yeah. yeah, it comparatively is very big and very fast. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what it was, and I keep seeing it pop up when I sh when I search my wild shapes. I'm like, it's got a movement of 400 feet. I, what is I this? I wish thing? you could exclude it books. Also, it also happens to be completely invincible and cannot be killed in combat. So, yep. uh, so Onyx is like a bit, regular but... cat. So, yeah, Onyx is yeah. just a cat. Okay, I will leave Onyx off my list then going forward. I just, I just didn't know what it was. Uh, yeah, so as a spider, I'll move as stealthy as I can, going around town, getting close to the docks before I revert to my normal form. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as a spider skirting the town at your speed, um, takes about 40 minutes. Um, and that's assuming that you s turn into the spider when you reach the city. If you're yeah, doing, if you're doing it from the camp, down. then yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste that time. I would, I would make my way back to town uh, keeping a pretty safe distance, kind of walking parallel to the road, not even on the main road, just to try and stay a little out of the way of the Knoll Patrol. And once the town's kind of in sight, and I can kind of, I'll work my way around as a spider. Okay. All right. So you uh, make it to the docks. We'll say with the extra time that you took as you are approaching town, we'll say that you've got five minutes left on your wild shape as you reach the docks. I would find a place with maybe some boxes or a little bit of cover to kind of hide behind and kind of make sure the null presence as as little as possible before I make my way to the dock and talk to, and before I revert back to myself and make my way back to the dock to talk to uh, any of the boat people. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of nulls um, here, given that the city is primarily nulls, but there sure. are some um, turtles and some lizard folk, as well as humans that are operating boats here. Uh, but yeah, I'm mainly, I'm mainly watching to make sure the guards, the, the Nold guards, are a lower presence. Mm -hmm. So there are only a few Nold guards um, on the docks. Uh, the docks are generally handled mostly by those who work the docks. Um, the guards are more just there to keep unwanted out of their city. Uh, on the docks themselves, are there nulls like the null guards out on the docks, or just like near the entry to the docks? They're near the entry to the docks. As a spider, I'm going to go under the dock to the far end of the dock, and then kind of come up before I revert back to my normal shape at the end of the dock, away from the guards. Okay. All right. And again, trying to find a good place to turn back into myself as obscured as possible before I like step out and say, hello, my name is Ore, to whoever I, I, I meet up there. Okay. Have yeah. you met our Lord and Savior, the stars? There is some cargo that you could um, get to. You could even crawl into some of the cargo boxes as a spider. 
Cool, cool. And then Ore out of the box. So you said uh, there are some turtles. What else did you say were around as uh, like boat captains? Uh, lizard folk and human as well. Uh, I will. Who would I get a good sense of? Like looking over the the individuals would be the probably the most. Uh, accommodating to our needs looking at both their boats and the the captains themselves make an insight check rolling for insights natural 20 okay full of 25 all right so looking around you spot one of the uh humans in particular stands out seems to have a fairly large ship and is loading very large crates onto it with his crew uh these crates are easily large enough to hide people in and you get the idea that that might be the best way to do it um you said he was a human yes uh i will as or a venture over and begin talking to him hello my name is bruce i <coughs> am looking to secure passage for myself and several individuals uh in kind of a unique situation if um that is something we can do He looks over his shoulder behind him for a moment. Looks at you. Who sent you? Uh, I have a... I feel like at this point we would have talked about like using the counselor's name, right? Use the mayor I, and the counselor's name? I, I wasn't planning on... The, I, or I still like kind of confused by the question, like who sent, like, I have friends that are a little outside of town, but we cannot move through town. You look like you have the option most accommodating to our unique situation. Yeah. Who told you about me? I just watched you from over there and you look like a captain that could accommodate my needs. No one sent me, unfortunately. At this moment, you see a look of puzzlement on his face. And he goes, then how do you know I transport people? I did not know you transport people, but you did have boxes that would accommodate the size of helping to transport some individuals. We move large cargo. But uh, I smuggle people in and out as needs be for a fee. Understood. Um, And I would like to meet that fee. If you are able to pick up some of my friends a little further down the coast. Uh, There's not a place for us to dock and load people up so there'd be no way to get them on my ship. But what we can do, five gold ahead. We can send some crates out, package you up, and bring you onto the docks. So you won't be seen at all. That is most accommodating. I do not have an issue with that price. And let me just quickly check and see if I have enough money to secure that price. So there are 10 of you in total, so that would be 50 gold. Uh, yeah. So who Uh, has the bag of money? We would have probably given it to Ori in case you needed to do something like this. Uh, I honestly yeah. I had enough cash on myself. I would have left money with you guys instead, just in case you needed to buy your way out of a terrible situation and before I'm back. Yeah. Uh, enough. I'm you probably happy. have the shared party funds right now. <laughs> I have I have my funds. Um, well, yeah, but you, you we would give we would have given you the shared party funds too to pay for this if needed. Oh, that that does make a little bit more sense um, because we can get reimbursed later. <laughs> 
Right, and you can reimburse me. Like I have, I, I, I have 145 gold. I can easily pay for, oh, for shit. the ten of us to get. Or he's paying for dinner. <laughs> Ito's got 25. Yeah, what the hell? Or he doesn't uh, so buy I, stuff. Yeah, Neither I, does I don't, Ito. Don't buy his food either. So, um, as I look at uh, looked at to him, what is your name, Captain? Uh, you can call me Severin. Because we'd be severing ties at the end of this. <laughs> that is I'm imagining that is your name. Thinking of a joke with his name. Do I need to escort your comrades to help secure my friends? I assume do we... you don't want to be seen in the city either, given that you popped up in the cargo. That is correct. Tell us where to go. We'll escort you out so that you can confirm the group. Understood. And uh, he takes you over to a large crate that looks like it could fit about three people in it. And uh, he tells you to climb on in. Thank you. You are most accommodating. Oh, by the way, here, now that we're like out of the way and I'm half in a box, I hand him the 50 gold. He goes, 10 of you. All right. We'll uh, Thank you. send some uh, crates over. And you see as he calls over his men and they start uh, loading up more boxes onto a dolly and then throw yours up on top. And you slowly begin moving throughout the city with this group of people. Cool. Uh, while I'm in the box, kind of moving through town, I'm just waiting for if they're stopped at all, and like anyone starts looking through the boxes, I'm back to being a spider. Okay. Uh, so you hear as they're going throughout the city, uh, some people talking. Uh, you over here uh, a conversation talking about a plan to deal with the mayor here and over here that he has been authorizing adventurers who have come through the right to kill any of the shattered dust and the guards who support them and they're doing a great job Uh, I'm not in a position to be able to see any of this information, just hear it as we're moving through town. Correct. And you said there's a plan against the mayor? Do they say what the plan is or like a time frame? Uh, so they are formulating and talking and it seems like they're more recruiting people to deal with it because as you know from going and meeting the mayor, he has his own personal bodyguards that he has hired and so there was going to be some kind of fight that they're going to have to get through so they're recruiting people to make sure that they can get to the mayor oh good okay um okay we probably want to try and rescue the mayor yeah well remember we were told by zamsa in the last session to intercept the army which there's a minimum of 50 gnolls prepared for battle in that army. I don't think we're quite skilled to that level, but I really think oh, yeah, we need no. to save the mayor somehow. <laughs> um, so I will contemplate this, these details that I have learned as I venture back to the, to the group in, in the box. Okay. Um, so as you exit the city, there's a knock on your... Um box that you're in and you hear the voice say where are your friends it's okay we're out of the city you can pop out um i like very cautiously open the lid of the crate kind of looking around a little bit to kind of see look get, get our bearings a little bit mm -hmm. and quiet and trying quietly though Ore isn't really quiet he's always at the same tone my friends are along the coast uh 
approximately five miles southeast of here. Uh, southeast of here is not the coast. Then east of here. I, I don't... We're, we're On that map, where were we? Uh, so you were directly east. south of Kuche, initially down in the camp, five miles south. Um, if they came up with you and wanted to go east, you guys would be about a, a mile and a half to the east of the south of town. Well, we uh, haven't gotten word yet yeah. from Ori. Oh, we're, so, so, so we're they should just at be camp. at the camp. Uh, so I, I say that, he says that back to me like, I will confirm. And I grab the sending stone. Hello, this is Ore. I have secured transport for us. We're heading to your location. Please let us know where you are. I have no idea if that's 25 words. I think that was less. Uh, so Mizeki will have it and he'll just say at camp still. We'll put out guard. Are you secure? Oh, change of plan. Forget, forgetting head... that you can't do the stone back to him. <laughs> Because you can't respond back. Right. I, I say, a change of plans. They are four miles south of us in a small camp. They go very well. And he goes, um, just out of curiosity, were you the group that killed the guards last night? They were racist. Unfortunately, yes. But it was a misunderstanding. They were not very accommodating to strangers entering town. Well, you must have had Tabaxi with you? Yes, we did. Yeah. We had rescued some Tabaxi. Oh. Fancy yourselves a bit of heroes, huh? Well. That's good. I don't believe that was our intention. It was just the right thing to do. Well. That's good on you. So, uh, let's get down to the camp, and uh, we'll load up your friends. Thank you. This is not the same captain. This is part of his crew, right? This is part of his crew. And what is your name, friend? Uh, my name is Guillermo. Del Toro. Pleasure to meet me, Guillermo. My name is Bruce. It's nice to meet you, Bruce. All right. So, after a couple hours, hours uh, from your guys' point of view in the camp, Ore arrives with five humans and three large boxes in tow. The humans look around and go, So, we understand we're smuggling you out the city that there's several tabaxi among you there are that is correct however would you mind while you stow the tabaxi i have a moment to confer with my friends oh yeah well i mean we probably don't want to stow you this far away probably stow you a bit closer to the city staying in those boxes for four miles cramped together probably not the best I wasn't sure of the protocol in this situation, but thank you for the in, the information. Uh, everyone, they will have a ship and get the our Tabaxi friends to safety. Us as well. However, and then I start pulling my the adventurers aside. I overheard traveling through town that there is an effort amongst the Knolls to make action against the mayor. I believe we should see what we can do to intervene. And you're trying to be quiet about this? Uh, yeah, I'm just like, just, just to the adventurers kind of pulling them aside as we're all like getting ready to go. Okay. Um, while we've been waiting, Mizeki probably would have tried to talk to any of the uh, tabaxi are any of them at all capable in combat? Uh, none of them look to be super capable in combat. Uh, okay. 
so they look like they're you know fresh out of school age that they were okay, so traveling and enjoying all right just got my degree i'm backpacking across Kuche. yeah and Didn't then turn they out the way i wanted to the too. terrorists perfect okay um we don't have any way to contact the mayor directly unfortunately that's going to be difficult given our response the last time we tried to even appear in near the town and i imagine those that def survived the defense have shared our description at the least <clears throat> that is my concern as well but i do believe we still have to make an effort i have not sent a message to zamza yet today perhaps we can request aid for the mayor Sorry, Algy <laughs> fell off the table. We're having a moment. I assume that's one of the tabaxi that was trying to get into one of the boxes. Yeah. Sure, we'll go with that. He was trying to get into a box, and he did fall off the table. It's canon. Just totally biffed it. So oh, I missed what you said, Ori. Because <laughs> it was loud. No, it's good. It's good. I was going to... Uh, you should be careful. They said we didn't have to get into the boxes until closer to town. And then I look back to you. Um, what did I say? I, we should... I have not sent a message to Zamza yet today. Perhaps we should request aid to help protect the mayor. But I still feel aid will not arrive in time. I don't feel like that's a bad plan to try. Worst case, they just tell us they won't be here in time. We can also let them know we'll be taking the prisoners. We don't have to leave with the prisoners, potentially. We should. I, I don't I don't relish the idea of staying here and being shot at every time I attempt to walk near a building. Perhaps, and I look to Guillermo, and then look back to Mizeki, we could have our friends smuggle out the mayor as well. Potentially. I don't know the ramifications of that, but that is an option, I would believe. That sounds good. Then I turn to Guillermo. Turn is acquiring the mayor safely. He's going to have cards. Agreed. Guillermo, would your organization be able to smuggle the mayor out of town as well? Yeah. Uh, like the boss said, five gold ahead. We don't care who we take. How would that work to get the mayor into one of the crates uh, inconspicuously? We could uh, act like we're dropping off a delivery with one of the crates. Then climb in and then, you know, if anybody asks, just say he denied it. And so we're taking it back. That sounds like our best plan. I concur. But, uh, I doubt the mayor will willingly climb into a crate if we just show up and tell him, hey, we're here to kick you out. We can send Ore with you. Yes, you could potentially take me to convince the mayor. All right, we'll take you in the package then and uh, deliver you to the mayor. Thank you. I appreciate all of your assistance to help us protect these individuals. I mean, to be fair, they are getting paid a crap ton of money, too. It's well worth it. It's a dangerous trade just for money. Yes. But a little danger is exciting. I have noticed this in the recent months.
if we're all in agreement, I think we should depart. All right. We'll load you up about a mile south of town and take you to the docks. Then we will take another box with Ore to town hall to meet the mayor. If you can convince him to leave. I will make my best effort. I mean, if he doesn't want to leave, that's on him. We'll do what we can. <laughs> Correct. But I... Should we see what his reply is before we reach out to Zamza? I think that's probably worth it, yes. Agreed. It may help in convincing him as well. All right, then. Most assuredly. Uh, so, Mizeki will look to Guillermo, Guillermo and basically try and coordinate with how we're going to get these people moved. All right. All right. So you guys head north. As you get a mile south of the city, the five humans start opening up the three crates that they've got and have you begin piling inside of the crates. It can comfortably fit four of you to a crate uh, with Mizeki's kind of larger statue stature. Um, you probably only want to fit three in his crate. But there are three of them, so there is plenty of space. So who wants to be together? And who wants to be with the tabaxi? Uh, or I wouldn't mind being with the tabaxi to kind of keep them calm. Okay. If he can. So we'll put you with three of them. That leaves two more. And I would the volunteer other three of you. I would volunteer to go with Mizeki to avoid being around the other Tabaxi. Okay. And then Ito and the other two Tabaxi? Ito. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So uh you guys get led through town in the crates loaded up on to the ship, taken down the cargo hold where you are set free on the ship. And Guillermo turns to Ore and goes, are you ready, sir? Let's see if we can go get your mayor and get him out. I'm ready. All right. Well, climb back in. Ms. Heki's going to give Ore a piece of gem candy for luck. Thank you. And he'll pocket it. All right. So, Ore, you are led in the crates to uh, the mayor's. There's, you hear the knock on the door. And Guillermo saying, we've got a delivery. You hear the door open and one of the guards pop out and say, we're not expecting a delivery. And then Guillermo leans and you can hear him whispering something and then he knocks on the crate. Uh, so I'll like pop up the top of the crate a little bit and like, is that my cue? Yes. The guard sees you. He goes, oh, it's you. Uh, yes. Come inside quickly. And I rush inside quickly behind him. All right. And they'll take the crate in behind as well. The mayor, still very stressed out, turns and sees you and goes, This can't be good news. If only one of you is returning, the guards, the city guards, 
lots of rumors have been going around. They said a group of people came in with some tabaxi last night, and they chased them off. That is one version of the story. The other version that is more accurate, since I was there, the guards are not hospitable to tabaxi entering town. We were trying to get them to a boat and offshore. They refused to gain a sentry. And poor consequences were exchanged. Unfortunately, your mayor, I did overhear in town that there is a plot against you. I have secured aid with these individuals to help smuggle you out of town. He takes a deep breath in and then breathes out slowly and he goes, I know that this place is dangerous for me. But what kind of message does it send to those in the city who do not support the Shattered Dust if I leave them here alone? What good is being here if it results in your death prematurely at the hands of viciousness? I will just have to trust that my guards can keep me safe, protect me. Or I will look to the guards. Do you feel you are capable of protecting him from the vast horde of gnolls that would wish him ill? They look at each other, look at the mayor, and look at you, and he goes, We, we can always easy. use extra support, but we will do everything we can to keep him safe. Understood. I'll turn back to Guillermo. Will you inform my friends that I am going to stay here and help protect the mayor? And I hand, um, Zamza's stone to him. Please see that this gets to the centaur. Bruh. The camera goes... Mr. May okay. Mr. Mayor, I believe this is a foolish choice, but I will also stay and help defend you as best I can. But I do suggest the best course of action is to self-preservation. You do more good alive than dead as a stance for your people. All right. So the mayor's going to look at you, and as you say this, he's going to go, self-preservation? You're one to talk about that. You're staying here in a city that is openly hostile to you at this point. You've been sent here to help deal with the issue. You fought. You've killed. Staying here is a death sentence by yourself. So how can you talk to me about self-preservation? As I am learning, Politics are quite complicated, but I feel it is my destiny to intervene. And I have skills that may help protect you and certainly aid your guards. Perhaps my well-being would still be considered self-preservation by being here. What about your friends?
I'm giving them the option to seek their own self-preservation. Ideally, I hope that when Guillermo returns my message to Mazeki, they may decide to come and stand ground as well. But if they do not, I respect that decision as well, for they will be safe. All right. Guillermo goes, well, if you've made your decision and you're staying and the mayor is not coming, then uh, I'll be making my way back to the docks with my men. Understood. Again, Guillermo, thank you for all that you have done for us. He nods and they carry the crate back out into the city streets and make their way up to the docks to their ship where they find Mizeki and they hand you a sending stone and say your forged friend asked us to give this to you he decided to stay as a note I still have the other half of the con the connected sending stones we already had yeah which we haven't used yet or today, have we? Yeah, we did one to test it and then one to let you know that we're on our way. Yeah, you... that's right. We both it's, it's burned for the day, but yeah, we still we have a connect, connected set. Yep. So Mizeki's immediately going to put his head in his hands and groan in annoyance because, damn it, got to make things complicated. And then he's going to look to everyone else and go. Uh, so Guillermo's here. I guess the first thing I'll ask is, uh, when is the plan to leave? Is that today, this evening, uh, now? What's the plan? We'll set sail when uh, the captain gives the order. Normally we set off around midday, but it kind of depends on what contracts he got and picked up. He doesn't tell us about anything until it's time to go pick it up. Fair enough. So... When they came back, did they mention to us that Ore stayed behind and won't be coming? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he, yeah, he, gave, he gave the yeah, sending okay. stone and, and said that. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Zeki's like um, just trying to figure uh, out how much time they have before he presents the question of who else wants to be stupid. Okay. Ito is immediately just going to step away and find a place on his own and, oddly enough, begin reading. Okay. So, I guess also, we have a little bit... I just realized oh, I forgot to say which box Elandiel it was in. Elandiel would have been with Ito and the other two to Paxi. I was like doing the math in my head. I'm like, wait, I only put nine people in boxes. Where's the tenth boxer? Um, so, I, I guess the decision is who else wants to stay and be a dumb hero? Uh, will so... you come back to pick us up then, Guillermo? Or should we go with you now? I guess we're in the ship, aren't we? Yeah, you're down in the cargo Never mind. of the ship. Ha <laughs> ha! Dumb question. So, yeah, I guess you'll just present the question to the others of who wants to be the dumb hero to stay. So, once Ito's been reading for a couple minutes, he hears the question and he just slowly closes the book and puts it away. And he just says, you know... I was not expecting to go on any of this adventure. I was expecting to investigate some ruins and then go back home. I ended up in an entirely different continent, fighting a political war in a political system that I don't understand. All of that doesn't really matter to me, because right now, I think running away on a boat is not what a proper Minotaur does. I think what a proper Minotaur of the Iron Hoof clan, and a proper Minotaur, a gladiator, no less, I'm staying. And whether I die or whether I survive, it's going to be one hell of a story. 
All right. So as you say that, Guillermo goes, but you ain't a minotaur. You're a human like me. Legally like, speaking, I'm going to raise a hand am... towards him and just be like, mm, don't, don't. Ito is, Ito is going to try his hardest not to engage with that particular thing um, at this moment because he doesn't want to spoil the thing he just said. Zeki's going to kind of stage whisper to Guillermo. He's he's a minotaur inside, and that's what counts. Ah. Okay. In sort of a like a bless him. Right. Well, it is, you're a it fine is minotaur. Visible. Ito is visibly trying not to explain the entire thing in one go. Well, I suppose if Ore is staying and Ito is staying, Mizeki, what about you? What are you doing? We've already put our lives at risk more than once. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I suppose I can't get my revenge if I don't stay. So I guess I'll figure out some way to join Ore and Ito. I hate all of you. A lot of y'all goes, well, I guess we're staying then. So All of you. We probably shouldn't go walking through town, though. No, I suppose I mean, it's back in the crates, then. Yeah, take the crates over. Burn the building down, worst case. It's hard to make someone stay when they're stuck in a burning building. It's easy to convince them to leave. All right. Guillermo goes, all right. What about all of your tabaxi friend? I would imagine they're looking to get home safely. At the very least, we need them to carry word of what's happened here. Okay. Guillermo turns to the back and go, uh, so where are you going? They go, uh, well, we would have been going to the mainland before we got taken, but now we should just be going home to Bracknell. Our family's... I'm sure are worried. We've been gone much longer than we anticipated. He goes, very well. We will drop you in Bracknell. Those of you um, that are staying Ito... back in the crates. Did Ito ever get the name of that nice tabaxi guard friend in Bracknell? Because I don't have it in my notes. And I'm pretty sure I don't have it because he'd never asked. Uh, then you didn't get it if you didn't ask. Okay. Because I was gonna, they... I was gonna say ask for so and so and say Ito needs a favor, but before they get in the crates, Mizeki's gonna ask uh, the various casters: Can any of you cast any sort of magical armor on me? We're probably going to be doing a lot of close range fighting. And my poor quality leathers likely won't help. Uh, I must admit, I have nothing for you, sadly. You're not a spellcaster, you know. I don't have mage armor, but I do have things that can help you in battle. Do none of our casters have mage armor. Was that uh, seven? The, that was Sefin, and that was because he was um, yeah, he's the special Mark dwarf. of Warding okay. Dwarf. Because um, that's a wizard spell. Yeah. Then I'll put on my shitty leather and be sad. Okay. 
if you, if you stay by me, I can protect you somewhat. Um, that goes for all of you, actually. Just generally stay near me. My shield can only reach so far. Uh, Alandiel could do Shield of Faith if he prepares it. Yeah, but that's conk, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not worth it. I don't know. I'll just wear my crappy leather and be sad. All right. Yeah, so the sorcerer could also get mage armor, but Sorcerer and Wizard is what it is. Yeah. Sorry, he, you didn't take it. Does Ito have even the faintest idea what that feeling was earlier when he used the whip? Uh, it felt like it was you. It was just weird. Interesting. Okay. So it, it, it was reminded you a bit of how you felt when you were chasing the centaur through the ruins. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're going to our potential deaths. Ezeki will um, talk to the ring silently and just be like, Hey, if things get dicey, don't hesitate to uh, step in and help. You hear the voice and he goes, When you fully accept and give yourself to me and my power as you grow and we grow together and my strength grows as you do, I can protect you. You still gotta buy me a drink. Well, when you free me from this contraption, I will buy you as many drinks as you would like. And then he will say aloud to the rest, all these evil spirits and whatnot wanting to grow together and be on your side of you and things, and they won't even buy you a drink first. What is the world coming to? You would want an evil spirit to buy you a drink? It's typically the first step when you get into more involved relationships. I imagine engaging with my soul would count as that. It's at I'd least be the same they... as being seen naked. I'd be afraid they poison it, but you do you. Poisoned minions don't make very good minions. All right. So, the four of you remaining get loaded up into the crates. Uh, two of them, again, just because of Mizeki's size, makes it a bit more comfortable. And you get delivered to the mayor's office. Ellen Dill's coming with us, so that's five people. Uh, no, Ori's already there. So Ori's there. <laughs> four people, so it's four people. Math. With so, almost a party. Yep. So, Ori, you see as your four friends get delivered in crates as Guillermo returns. I cannot tell you how happy I am to see you. I was greatly hoping you would make the same choice. And I am sure you are almost as happy as I am disappointed. Let's uh, let's start making this place somewhat defensible, yeah? Agreed. I turn to the mayor. Is there some place more secure in your office that we may be able to fortify? You see a big, wide grin 
go across his face and he goes, yeah, there is. And that's where we'll end tonight's session. I hope he has a ballista. I hope he has the underground. I'm expecting him to like move a bookcase away and it's... Oh, that would be awesome. I just want to sneak attack a dude with a ballista, that's all. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching, for hanging out. Uh, this Yay. session was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, yeah. We will be playing uh, next week on November 6th. Uh, but then we won't have another game until December due to various vacations and holidays coming up for the group. Uh, so we will have next week, November 6th. And then we won't be playing again until December 4th. Uh, so thanks for coming out and for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.